Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, praise God. Praise God. The 27th number of the book of Psalms begins with this uh, reading. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Because of him we have no reason to fear a man. Though the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. We have no reason to fear because the Lord is our light and our salvation. That's good news this morning, amen? Amen. Are you glad to be here this morning? (laughs) Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, join along with us as we declare that the Lord is our light. Yeah. Come on, put those hands together. Lord, you are my light. Lord, you are my light. Yeah. Lord, you are my light. You are my salvation. Whom? I, I don't have to worry. I won't be afraid. Or in the time of trouble. In the time of trouble. Hallelujah. Yes, he will. Lord, you are my joy. You are my salvation. Who shall I fear? I don't have to worry. I won't be afraid. Hallelujah. He shall. shall hide me shall upon a rock of stone. He shall set me. Lord, you are my light. Lord, you are my joy. You are my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I don't have to worry. I won't be afraid. Come on, proclaim it this morning, church. He shall. Yes, Lord. He shall hide me. In his tabernacle. He shall set me upon a rock of stone. He shall hide me. In his tabernacle. He shall set me upon a rock of stone. Come on, sopranos. Come on, proclaim it. I will sing praises. Join us at our toes. Join us, tenors. I'll sing praises. Come on, all over the building. If you're going to sing his praises, join with us. I will sing praises. I'll sing praises. Yes, I will. Let's take it a little higher. Let's take it a little higher. I will sing praises. Yes, I will. Praises unto you. I will sing praises. Yeah. 
I will sing praises. One more time. I will sing praise. I will sing praises. Praises unto you. I will sing praise. Praises unto you. I will sing praises. Praises unto you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. hallelujah. And say hallelujah one more time. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in the house of worship this morning? Come on, give God a great praise if you know that it's only by God's grace and his mercies that we are in his house one more time to magnify the Lord. Come on and magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Come on, come on and magnify the Lord with me. Were you glad when they said unto you, let us go into the house of the Lord. And when we go, let us worship him in spirit and in truth. Are there any spirit and in truth folk in the house who realize that they had not been? Come on, come on. Why don't you testify in your praise? As floods raged against the house in the cars. But if it had not been... Some folks couldn't get their oxygen, but if they had not been, some folks are displaced without home and shelter, but if it had not been for the Lord on their side, ah, we give God a great praise this morning because some things might have been damaged, but we still got life. Can somebody just testify? in a great big hand clap that we still got life. Look at somebody and say, I'm still alive. I'm still alive. It could have easily went the other way. But I still got life. Amen and amen. We praise God again for this worship opportunity. We give God in heaven all the praise and glory be unto his name. Welcome here to the Shiloh Baptist Church at 515 West 4th Street in this great, great Queen City of Plainfield, New Jersey. We came to magnify this Lord, the Lord this morning, didn't we? Amen and amen again. I am excited. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God in heaven, how we thank you. We exalt your holy and your righteous name because dear God, we know if we wasn't reminded any time other than this week that you still have power in your righteous right hand, that you still sit high and look low, and that as your word says, dear God, that you still care for your people. So we thank you for your protection and your provision. We thank you, dear God, for how you held us in the hollow of your hand. We thank you because, dear God, we still know and believe and declare that you do all things well. Now, God, we ask that you would tabernacle with us just for a little while as we seek to worship your name in spirit and in truth. Lord God, free us of every distraction, of every shackle. Let our mind be focused on you and your goodness and your graciousness unto us, your people. That, dear God, by the time the psalmist stops singing and the, the organist stops playing and the preacher stops preaching, dear God, that we will be encouraged for the road that lies ahead. Bless us now here at the Shiloh Baptist Church. Bless your church worldwide, dear God. And bless and touch those, dear God, who were stricken and suffered loss uh, by this uh, natural disaster, dear God. Because we know that even purpose lies in that. So we bless your name right now, dear God, for all that you do all that you have done and all that you're going to do. This is our praise and our belief in Jesus' name. With great joy and vigor, let the people of God say amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Again, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am going to take my seat while the Refresh Ensemble behind me will come back and render another selection. Say amen as they come. Amen.
Is that what you want him to do this morning? A clean heart. This is our prayer. Oh Lord, create in me a clean heart. In me. Listen. Lord, create in me a clean heart. This is my prayer today, Lord. A clean heart. Oh, Lord, create in me a clean heart. In 
Come on, keep praising God. Come on, anybody want a renewed and right spirit in the Lord? Come on, put your hands together and tell God thank you for renewing our spirits. Every now and then, am I the only one? You need your spirit renewed. Life tosses you and turns you and you need your spirit Renew. We praise God and we praise God again for the refreshed ensemble and those who sung the song of Zion so beautifully behind me. I'm going to ask that you would stand to your feet. Amen, amen, as we enjoy ourselves together in this morning's responsive scripture reading. Amen. The responsive scripture reading can be found in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 through 7 as well as 10 through 17 and verse 19. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I rejoice greatly in the Lord, that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not the church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except to you only. For even when I was in Thessalonia, you sent me, did aid again and again when I was in need, not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. Altogether, but my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen for the word of God. Amen. We know that that word is already blessed. Let us remain standing as we join our voices together to sing and worship congregational hymn number 38. Count your blessings. When upon life's billows, when upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, count your many blessings, and it will surprise you. Oh, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened? Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Oh, count your blessings, name them one by. Count your blessings. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what. When you look, when you look at others with their lives and 
yet Christ has promised you. Count your many blessings. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Oh, count your blessings, name them one by one. So amid the conflict, so amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journeys. And oh, count your blessings, name them one. Come on, church, lift it up this morning. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Oh, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Your blessings, name them one by Come on, church. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God and praise God again. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We thank God for his blessings. Amen. amen. I said amen. Amen and amen again. For the hymn says, count your many blessings. Angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Amen. I just felt like somebody needed to hear that. Amen. This morning that there's angels encamped around you. We praise God again for our minister of music, Minister Wendell Craig Woods and the congregational hymn number 38, which reminds us God's people that we are still blessed in spite of. I wish I had a witness this morning. Amen and amen. This is our moment where we pause in our worship experience for just a minute. Uh, to praise God for those of you who may be visiting in the sanctuary and or watching us virtually. Amen. On behalf of our pastor elect, the Reverend Dr. Danielle L. Brown, as well as our assistant pastor here at the Shiloh Baptist Church, uh, Reverend Sheila L. Thorpe. Amen. And our chairman of deacons, Deacon James Davis. Come on, come on. Praise God for faithful servants. Our chairman of trustees. James Timmons, officers, members alike, we greet you in the name of Jesus. We praise God for your presence. We do realize that worship experiences are taking place all over the land, especially in this virtual season. So we do not take for granted that God has led you here to worship with us at the Shiloh Baptist Church located at 515 West 4th Street in this great city of Plainfield, New Jersey. Our prayer is that something is said and done that will move you to want to know Jesus a little bit more and give your life to him. So again, on behalf of our pastor, elect Reverend Dr. Daniel L. Brown, the members alike, we praise God for you. And we thank you for joining with us here at the Shiloh Baptist Church. Come on Shiloh, why don't we put our hands together for those who found it not robbery to come and worship with us. And if I can take the ministerial privilege, just want to praise God for uh, Reverend Dr. Larry Atkins, who is in the house with us this morning. Amen. One of our longtime associate ministers here at the Shallow Baptist Church, who's doing a great 
work behind the wall. Amen and amen again. I think we have a few audio announcements that will come at this time from our media ministry. Say amen as they go. Greetings to you all. I'm Minister Brian Johnson here from the Shallow Baptist Church. I'm the youth and young adult minister here. And I'm coming to you this morning for a few minutes, not even actually. And I want to let you know about the COVID-19 vaccination. We have lost so many people, grandmothers, uncles, granddaddies, aunties, and a whole host of others. And so while you may think you're strong enough to beat this thing, or you may even be in fear of needles, I'm just asking you that you would take it to the Lord, go get vaccinated. All millennials, all young people do this so you can help save a life. I'm sure God would appreciate it. God bless you. Hello everyone, my name is Charlotte Banks and I'm the facilitator for the Wednesday Bible study at Shiloh Baptist Church. And I'm just here right now to encourage you all to get vaccinated. I, have, I am fully vaccinated, I got my shots as soon as I was able to because I understood the need for it. This is not just any other flu or anything else that we've ever seen before. This is something completely different. And yes, I had all my normal childhood vaccinations like many of you, but this is new and this is something that we have to be protected from. When I saw the number of people who became ill and died from COVID-19, I was convinced in completely that it was something that needed to be done. So if you're still wondering about it, what I ask is that you just put it out of your mind. Every single uh, drug, every single, even your aspirin that you take has some little side effects. I was really tired after my second shot, but that was it. Just the assurance to know that I would not be seriously ill uh, and certainly would not die from COVID-19 was enough for me to choose to be vaccinated. And I wish the same for you because it gives me a great assurance, a great peacefulness, and I'm sure that it will give you one too. Get vaccinated. Our Tuesday Bible study entitled New Beginnings Joy, a study in Philippians has concluded. Future studies will be announced. In the meantime, log on to our website to access our Bible study library to engage in past lessons. Our Wednesday Bible study scheduled for September 8th is canceled, but will resume next Wednesday, September 15th at 11 a.m. Join our live stream to participate as we continue our study in the book of Acts. Shallow Baptist Church commits to the well-being of our members and visitors. As such, we ask that you kindly wear a face mask while you are on the premises. The third booster vaccine for COVID-19 is available. For those who have a compromised immune system, we strongly encourage you to consider getting the booster shot. Shiloh Baptist Church leadership is continuing to make an appeal to Shiloh members, families, and friends to make a special donation to our A. Ross Brent Scholarship Fund. Seibel, Shiloh's Institute of Biblical Learning and Education, remains on hiatus and will resume in the fall. The fall 2021 edition of The Word for You Today is available. Purchase your copy today on Shiloh's website, in the church office, or immediately after our worship service in the vestibule. Shiloh's prayer call is on Tuesdays at 12 noon. To participate, please dial 978-990-5000. Use access code 854056. Considering making a contribution to Shiloh? Shiloh family and friends have various options for contributing tithes and offerings to the Shiloh Church. Please view the directions listed on Shiloh's website. That's all for now, Shiloh. Thank you. Come on and say amen for the media ministry of the Shiloh Baptist Church, as well as the voice of our own sister, Kim Finney. For you have heard the announcements that went forth. Our prayer and our plea is that you would govern yourselves accordingly, uh, as God is doing so many great and wonderful things here still for us and through us 
at the Shiloh Baptist Church. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen and amen again. We are now transitioning to our offertory appeal portion of this worship experience where we praise God for each and every one of you who have been so faithful uh, in your giving. Somebody say amen again. Boy, it was a rough season for many, but God still proved himself to be a provider. And so we are obedient and faithful in coming back, giving what his word requires that we give so that ministry would still take place here in this particular branch of Zion. So on behalf of the leadership team here, on behalf of our chairman, of trustees, treasurer, and all the members here, we praise God for each and every one of you who found it not robbery to give to us here at the Shiloh Baptist Church so that we might continue to be the beacon of light in this community. Those of you who have the desire to give but never gave before, we ask that you would log on to our website if you're watching, shilohplainfield.org, and there you will see a tab that reads giving instructions. If you would just click that, it will advise you on the various ways that you could be a blessing here to the Shiloh Baptist Church. On behalf of leadership, I thank you and praise God for your generosity in advance. Come on, Shiloh, why don't we go ahead in prayer and lift these offerings up into the Lord. Father God in heaven, we thank you, dear God. We thank you for being a provisionary. We thank you for being a need meter, dear God. We thank you for how you kept on and continually provide for us in our time of need. We thank you, dear God, because not only do you just meet our needs, but you give many of us the overflow. And so, Father God, we thank you for the overflow. We ask that you would give us a spirit of obedience and faithfulness, and that we would continue to be good stewards over the things in which you have given unto us. Dear God, bless each and every giver. Bless those who have the desire to give, but it's just not their season to do so. We ask God that you would bless them richly and that they would be reminded that they have because you gave and that they will come running, bringing their ties into the storehouse. We thank you for it all, dear God. We lift these gifts and these givers up to you. In the precious name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all of God's people say amen. Amen, amen and amen again. It is now time for preaching Shiloh Baptist Church. Family and friends, amen. Amen. That is the joy and excitement we ought to have when we are about to hear from heaven. It is my pleasure to introduce and present to some the assistant slash interim pastor still of the Shiloh Baptist Church. The Reverend Sheila L. Thorpe will be our preacher for the hour. Come on and put your hands together. Praise God for the woman of God who will come and stand behind this sacred desk and declare what thus saith the Lord and what thus saith the Lord only. Our custom, as you know, is to raise your right hand and point it towards the God servant of the hour and repeat after me. Say, preach Jesus, Reverend Thorpe. It is our humble yet bold belief that as the woman of God stands and as we pray that God would endow and that we would hear a word from on high and our hearts would be enriched and our souls would be blessed. I'm going to take my seat. The Refresh Ensemble is going to come back with another selection and the next voice you will hear will be none other than the preacher for the hour, Reverend Sheila L. Thorpe. Hear ye, hear ye her.
that I don't have to cry all the time. Hallelujah. That I know a God who's promised me that if I sow in tears, I'll reap in joy. Hallelujah. Oh, you don't sound like you understand it. I don't know about you, but I shed a lot of tears in the past two and a half years. But I know a God who says, weeping will endure for a night, but joy. Somebody said, but joy, but joy comes in the morning. If you know what I'm talking about, why don't you give God praise? Why don't you stand on your feet? Hallelujah. My, 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 my. I think I got some folk in here who understand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God for the Refresh Ensemble. Praise God for the Minister of Music. Praise God for all of you who are here today. Blessings and peace on all of you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is good to be here. All right, I'm so glad. So glad. Rows are still closed. Help me, Holy Ghost. Came down one today and they say, Row closed. Went to another one and they said, Row closed. Like, didn't you read the first sign? It was like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? Find another way. Hallelujah. How many of us have had to find another way? I know what I'm talking about. I've got some folk who can agree that God is still on the throne. And he is showing us another way. Hallelujah. 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 Blessings and peace to all of you. Greetings to my pastor, as I'm sure she is watching wherever she is, to the Reverend Dr. Uh, Danielle L. Brown. God bless you as you are viewing us today. To all of you in our live stream audience, God bless you. I am so glad that you are with us and that you will continue to be with us as we continue on this highway uh, journey. To all of you here, saints, in sanctuary worship, give yourselves a hand. Because there were some roads closed and you didn't have to get here, but you're here and we praise God again for your presence. Amen and amen. Bow with me, if you will, as we ask God's blessings. Our Father and our God, again, we say, as we meet you again this morning, uh, that you, Lord God, would hide me behind the cross. Let them see less of me and more of thee. Give me the strength and the courage to deliver the word that you've given me to give to them so that they might be strengthened for the journey, that they might be ever welcoming every change, that they will see you in all that is done. And that at the very end, Lord God, you will be glorified and they will be edified. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord God, that you consecrate us to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let our souls look up in a steadfast hope and our wills be lost in thine. Say amen and amen and amen. Turn with me, if you will, to Philippians. Uh, it's amazing that in our scriptural uh, responsive reading, we read all over these two verses. So I'm going to give you the two that you missed. Turn to Philippians, the fourth chapter, and we are going to look at verses four through, uh, no, chapter four, uh, verses eight and nine. You've read all the others, am I right? Amen, amen. The text reads, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. In another version, King James, it says, of whatever is excellent, if anything, if whatever is uh, of good report, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, if anything has virtue, 
then or is praiseworthy. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Because I use in this particular sermon the King James Version, I'm going to read that one for you because I need you to hear the language that we will be using as we read through. Say amen if you can. So if you have King James on your um, device, uh, go to King James, the fourth chapter again, and let's just look at verses 8 through nine. Finally, brethren and sister, in whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think of these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Say amen for the reading of God's word. My question to you, my brothers and my sisters, during these last few days of Ida, tornadoes and floods, is what did you count? Did you count the number of the death toll? I know somebody knows it right off the bat. Did you count the number of houses that were demolished? Did you count the number of communities that were hit with either flood, fire, or tornado? Did you count the number of basements that were flooded? One foot and above or whatever, water everywhere. Did, did you count the number of customers who lost power throughout this uh, tri-city area? I think we are talking Pennsylvania, Jersey, and New York. Hit the hardest. Did you count the number of cars floating down new-made streams and rivers in the middle of the street? Did you count those that were left on the roads that had to be moved? on the next day. What did you count? Did you count the number of those who did not die in the flood, the fire, or did not perish in the tornado? Did you count the number of houses left standing? Did, did you count the communities that were not hit? Tangent story. My brother lives in Burlington Township. He sat on his porch, he said. He said, since I watched the funnel cloud for the tornado on my front porch, and I watched it skip right over Burlington Township and where I live and hit Willingboro right behind me. Did you count the fact that you could sit on your front porch, see a tornado whirling around you, and go beyond. Did you count the basements that were bone dry? Another story. Girl says to me, I woke up and I looked out in my front yard and I thought I was in an ocean front hotel. She said the water was all the way up to the porch. My neighbor's car veered off the road that was also flooded and came into my yard. It lodged itself between a telegram pole and a tree. Then I turned around and looked out my back window and discovered that my neighbor's pool had become my pool. So here I am with an ocean front and a pool in the backyard. And I said, whoa, wait. What about the house? Was it hit? She said, no. The house was never hit. I said, okay, you got water in the front, you have water in the back, and it's raining everywhere. She said, my basement's bone dry. What did you count? Ah, my brothers and my sisters, I'm making a point after Ida, three tornadoes, rain, flood, and fire everywhere, power outages. What did you count? I contend that if we pay attention to the word of God as Paul gives it to us, he says, finally, 
my brothers and my sisters, after all of that stuff, after everything that goes on in life, what are you going to count? He says, I contend that my brothers and my sisters, it's over, this is it. Uh, you've got to know what it is you're going to count. He says, if you're true and you're honest, he says, then there's truth in our words and our engagements. So don't say you're going to do something if you're not going to do it. Don't say that you're going to be somewhere if you're not going to be there. Don't exaggerate your circumstances so that you can go with the masses. Stand firm, he says. This is just a, another piece of Paul and joy. He says, stand firm in what you know. Be true, not only to others, but be true to yourself. Help me, Holy Ghost. Everyone is talking about their disastrous circumstances. And if you join in to talk about your disaster and you didn't have one, shame on you. Instead, tell the truth. God bless me. The storm passed over. I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening. The storm passed over. Could have done a lot of damage right here at the Shiloh Church. Trustees say amen. But the storm passed over. Someone is out there now. They're creating a GoFundMe account. You know people create those accounts. And the funny thing about them is that some of them are not really true. I mean, be careful, my brothers and my sisters, about contributing to every GoFund account you see. Uh, somebody asked a long time ago, uh, I thought we were going to set up one for uh, Minister Brian Johnson. And I said, no, we thought better of that. We're God's people. If we're going to help Minister Brian Johnson, we're going to help him right here. He's on staff. We don't have to set up a GoFundMe account. Say amen again. But that's a tangent. That's a tangent. The point I'm trying to make, my brothers and my sisters, is that when we are true to ourselves, we are honest. When we are looking at that which is noble and pure, agreeable to all as it relates to justice and righteousness, then we can finally look on life a little differently. We are the saints of God. What do we count? Lovely and of good report. Not running feet to spread uh, some bad news about someone, but some running feet to spread the good news about somebody. Help me, somebody. He says, uh, edify, don't tear down, be a builder, not a bulldozer. You've heard it from me at least for two years. A brother was stranded. And another stopped by to pick him up. That's what I'm talking about. What do you count? One brother had water in his basement and a whole lot of brothers and sisters have been there dumping them out, trying to make sure that the, that the floors become dry and that they are able to move forward. Now, 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 now. This is the part I, I really want us to look at. In verse 9, in verse, the latter part of verse 8, if there is any virtue, didn't say you had to be totally virtuous. Some of us walking around trying to be perfect. I do caution you. You're going to hurt yourself. You can't. You are going to hurt yourself. You cannot be perfect. If there is any virtue, no matter how small, no matter how insignificant, how infrequently it occurs, you know somebody who has been denying God for the past 56 years? When they finally say, God's got it, that's shouting time. Don't beat up on them. Don't even bring it to their attention because they finally got it. I'm just so glad that when we look at the text here, Paul cautions us. He says, if there is any virtue, then he goes on to say, if there is anything praiseworthy, he says, in your life, in the lives of those whom you know, if there's anything, one thing, one half of a thing, an itsy bitsy teeny weeny thing, 
Stop looking for perfection and stop picking on folk because they are not perfect. Stop looking at folk and, and, and finding the one thing that could be wrong when there is so much else that's right. Help me, Holy Ghost. He says, if there's any virtue, any, not all, if there's any, 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 any leaves the door wide open. If there's anything that's praiseworthy, any, he says, then I want you to meditate on these things. For us in the Christian church, that's prayer. I don't know about anybody else, but I have seen prayer work in this church in ways that have truly made me astonished. I am amazed. Anybody here talking about what prayer has done? Can you stand to your feet and say, prayer changed my life. Prayer made me who I am. Prayer made me whole. Please keep my name on the prayer list because I need that prayer. Meditate, he said, on these things. You can be seated. If you can combine these two, any virtue and anything worth praise. He says, meditate on them. Think about them. He says, and as you are thinking about them, it's your attitude that you've got to change. It's your attitude that counts. Nothing else. I've been talking to you about your mind and your heart and how the two have to hook up. It's your attitude that counts. If you have the wrong attitude, the numbers will always be wrong. If you've got the wrong attitude, you're always looking for the wrong stuff. If you've got the wrong attitude, nobody is ever going to be all right in your eyesight. Help me, Holy Ghost. If you've got the wrong attitude, you are going to only see dishonesty and lies instead of truth and honesty. Your attitude counts if you only see pride and deceit instead of nobility and purity, your attitude is wrong. If you only see ugliness and corruption instead of lovely and good report, then it means your attitude is wrong. Yo, it's your attitude that counts. If you have the right attitude, you will replace every single worry in your life. I've heard some disturbing news this week. And it's challenging me. And I hope it challenges you. That when you think you are at your lowest. When you think things are so bad. That there is absolutely nothing that you can do to get yourself out. When you think you are at the deepest and the darkest point of your life. You are in the abyss. So much so that you want to take your life. I've got to say you need a change of attitude. We've got to change our attitude because it's our attitude that, that really counts. It counts when it comes to our lives. It counts when it comes to others' lives. My brothers and my sisters, I don't know what kind of Christian you are, but there used to be a saying, if every Christian was just like me, what kind of world would this world be? Don't answer. Because the question remains for us as brothers and sisters in Christ. All of us in here are probably saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and on our way to heaven. However, there is somebody out there. There's somebody in your family who needs to hear your attitude. Please don't join in when they start talking about all the negative. Oh, no. You've got to say, baby, you've got to change your attitude. It's just not all wrong. There are some things that are right. I'm not going to always be a victim. I know what it is to experience victory. You've got to be the change agent in the room. It's your attitude that counts. If you count, if you are paying attention to your attitude, Paul tells us, he says, if you are paying attention to the attitude, you can do what the psalmster just said. His name was Johnson Oatman, who wrote, Count Your Blessings. 
You know, Oatman was one of several children, and everybody else was, you know, big time. Uh, he had a preacher in the family and folk who were really good in business, etc. And Johnson Oatman thought he was not worth a dime. He went into a real fit of depression because he didn't believe that he was uh, measuring up. And I do believe he uh, thought at one time that he would never amount to anything. He, there were beautiful voices in his family. He, could, he sounded like a frog. Couldn't sing a note. Couldn't hold it in a bucket with a lid on it. But Johnson Oatman sat down one day and started writing. And as he started writing, do you know he penned over 5,000 hymns, 5,000 songs. And the one that is the most sung and revered is Count Your Blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. Let us stop looking on the dark side of life and look on the bright side. Stop looking at what is wrong and look at what's right. Count your blessings. He says, and Paul tells us, in order for us to be content, not only do we count our blessings, but we have to be one in the faith. You've got to know who Jesus the Christ is. I'm talking to somebody who doesn't know. You've got to know that he will save your soul. You've got to know that he has already died on the cross. You don't have to keep crucifying him with your little mess. Just ask God to forgive you and keep moving. Once you accept him, he says, as often as you sin and you confess, then I will be faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Count your blessings. Be one in the faith and never doubt. Paul says, if you will do these things, Paul says, I'm a model. But I'm not really the model. The model is Jesus the Christ. He says, if you will model yourself after Jesus the Christ, he is with you. He is with you. He is God, Emmanuel, with us. Not will be. He is with us all the time. The end is, we never doubt. Then he says, give thanks. Some of us have so many blessings in our lives, we figure like, well, I'll, I got so many, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to say thanks. We've got to say thanks. There's a thank you for every blessing. And if it keeps you up at the, in the middle of the night just saying thank you, just keep saying thank you, Lord, for the blessings. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings. Enjoin with Christ and obey. Build nations. He says to us in the Great Commission, go. And teach, baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. If you need to understand how to live this life, not only with contentment in the midst of change, with all the stuff that's going on around us, then you need to start counting your blessings. But remember, it's your attitude that counts. Because you can count the wrong stuff and be depressed for the rest of your life. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings and see what God has done. Before I take my seat, I want to share something with you because I know that some of you have not taken the time to see it. In this month, and the cover of the word for you today is a letter. And uh, I got a wonderful text from a member of the church who said, Wow, I know you wrote this letter three to four months before this happened. How did you, not how did you know, but God bless you for sharing this with us. Listen to this letter. I want to read it to you. And only because I think we need a devotional in our lives every day. As we embark upon new beginnings, the season of beginning is upon us. This season heralds changes that we have never seen before. 
And after long months of being sequestered inside, we are still opening doors. We're still testing the maskless culture. We are still challenging our varied modes of transportation. We are still examining old ideas, analyzing new ones, and ultimately recognizing that change is constant, stress is inevitable, but we can be content. There is yet much around us that makes us want to holler. But even in the scream, there remains a resolve that change is now. If in fact life is full of change, and with that comes great stressors, why should we be anxious and overburdened with the futility of worry? Like the seasons, they will change. From summer to fall, from fall to winter, from winter to spring, and back again to summer, even with ambivalent climate fluctuations. What did we just have last week? Somewhere implanted in the recesses of our daily existence reside a sacred space for contentment. God, in his infinite wisdom, live stream, realizes, releases us from all worry releases us from anxiety and fear. For I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. And while this may seem cliche it is how the people of God manifest life daily. Not that we are oblivious to our circumstances, not that we are apathetic to the world dilemmas, not that we are negligent in the fight for just causes, and not that when the skirmish is over, we simply choose, listen, we choose our attitude, the harmonic path of restoration with an attitude of grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Give God a blessed amen. You're watching us, and you're listening to the applause in this congregation. And you're saying, how in the world can they applaud when it appears as though everything is falling apart? Because we know God, and he has promised us that he'll be with us, that he is with us in every trial. In every tribulation, in every circumstance, regardless how big or how small, your stuff you think is big. I contend by the power of the Holy Ghost, turn it over to Jesus and you will really see how small it is. I invite you to allow Jesus into your heart so that you might find the same joy that is in this sanctuary, that you might find the same peace, the same contentment, so that you might know him in the pardoning of your sin. And once you've done that, just simply pray this prayer. I and your name come to you, Lord Jesus, and I give my life to you. And I know that tomorrow I will not be perfect, but I do know that you will be with me. That in these dark days right now, you will be my light. And I just want to say in advance, thank you for coming in. And I promise from this day forward that when I look at every situation, I'll call your name. And when calling your name, I'll know that you have that situation in the palm of your hands. And only you can take care of it. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. At church, come on, give God praise. Amen and amen again. Were you blessed this morning? Were you encouraged this morning? Do you have some blessings to count this morning? Amen. 
Amen and amen. Again, we praise God for Reverend Sheila L. Thorpe and the word of God this morning. That it fell on fertile ground. And that we might take this word, run with it, and be encouraged on the journey ahead. We praise God and praise God again for you and the word of God. Just want to bring forth a few announcements for your hearings uh, that we did not share during our audio announcements this morning. Uh, want to share the theme for the Shiloh Baptist Church in this season of 2021, which is New Beginnings, United in Love. Our theme scripture can be found in the book of Psalm, chapter 133, verse 1. I'll read for your hearing out of the New King James Version, which reads as such, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That is Psalm 133, verse 1 out of the New King James Version. And as we are in agreement, that word is already blessed. Amen. Uh, Shiloh, we petition that you would keep some folks lifted in prayer. Uh, because as Reverend Thorpe shared, we know what prayer has the power to do. Amen. Uh, before we do that, I want to read a card that we received so that when we get to the prayer list, that we might be encouraged that prayer does what it is set out to do. Dearest Shiloh family, God bless you richly for the outpour of sympathy cards sent to us as we celebrated the life of the patriarch of the Lawson family. Thank you for lifting us in prayer and the overwhelming love and support from the Shallow Baptist Church leadership, Shallow Baptist Church staff, the Shallow Baptist Church ministries and its members. Nobody does it like you and no one is as grateful as me. With appreciation, Deacon Lawrence Lawson and Sister Lauren Lawson and the entire Lawson family. Say amen. Amen and amen. We're still praying for you and with you, uh, Sister Lawson and family. We're asking that you would uh, pray special prayers on behalf of uh, Roger Venable, uh, the brother of uh, Billy Ann Collins. He, he transitioned. We're asking that you would pray for that family. The funeral arrangements are pending at this time. Uh, Sister Barbara Akram, whom is the sister of Sister Mary Tarver, also transitioned. The viewing is on Thursday. September 9th at Jutkins across the street funeral home from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. The home going will be on Friday, September 10th at 10 a.m. at the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church in Newark, New Jersey, asking that you would continue to keep the Tarver family lifted in your prayers. Uh, Ruth Ann Parham, whom is the sister-in-law of Alex and Mary Parham, transitioned in Washington, D.C., asking that you would continue to keep the Parham family in your prayers. Uh, those who also stand in the need of prayer, uh, Nasir Foster, whom is the cousin of Sister Evelyn Baker, asking that you will remember uh, the name Samuel Anderson, whom is the son of Moses Johnson. Continue to keep Diane Collins in your prayers. This is the sister of Sister Suzanne Brown, ask that you will pray for Brother Neville Williams and call out the name of Sister Vivian and Brother Calvin Hargrove who suffered some serious structural damage um, during the storm and are displaced from their home and asking that you will remember them in your prayers. Pray for Sister Janet Henderson. Pray for Deacon Trustee Lloyd Bailey who sent the text this morning to me saying that uh, he was in pain and his body is ailing him, and so I promise that we will remember him during our time of prayer. Shiloh, there are many who stand in the need of prayer, but just to show you how good God is, Sister Zingia Quarles, who we have been praying for so mightily for these past several weeks, is doing so much better. So much better. She's not where she once was at death's doorstep because the prayers of the righteous availeth much so I ask that you would continue to pray for the names that I mentioned and even those who may be at home and in, in nursing homes uh, pray for those who have suffered loss both life and material things in the midst of this flood pray for those who 
labor faithfully on the front lines to serve their communities the right way. Asking that you would pray for our pastor elect, Reverend Dr. Danielle L. Brown, as she prepares to come and labor with us and alongside us here at the Shiloh Baptist Church. Continue to pray for our assistant interim pastor, Reverend Sheila L. Thorpe. Pray for our deacons, our trustees. Pray for the Shiloh Baptist Church staff. Remember our faithful minister of music. Remember one another. Pray for the community, the neighborhood. Pray for this land, for this country. Pray for those who are without because there are still so many people who are without. And that's why our hearts can rejoice and our hearts can be glad and our hearts can be grateful because we know in spite of what's taking place around us that God has shown himself to be our God, proven that we are his people. Let us join our hearts and our minds together that we might seek the throne of grace and mercy on one accord, pleading with our God in heaven. Father God in heaven, before we ask you for anything, we want to thank you for everything. And so we just thank you, dear God, because we know that in the midst of trials and tribulations, in the midst of ailments, in the midst of financial troubles, in the midst of uh, unemployment, that we can still say thank you. Because we have life, we have breath in our bodies, dear God. That means you still have purpose for us here. So we ask that you would continue to hold us up, prop us up on every leaning side, dear God, that we might not grow weary in well-doing, that we might not be discouraged to the point that we forget and lose sight of who you are and your capabilities. Because your word says that you have all power in your righteous right hand, dear God. And so we're pleading right now that you would show yourself God in every circumstance. Show yourself God in every situation. Stop by those who are grieving, those who have suffered losses. Continue to stand up those who are laying flat down in hospital beds. Stop by the homes of those who are ailing in pain and in affliction, dear God. Comfort the hearts, minds, and spirits of those who had to look at basements that was full of water and cars that floated away. For God, you've given those things to us, and so we know that you can give them to us again. Even greater, I believe. So we say thank you in advance. We say thank you for restoration. We say thank you, dear God, for still sitting high but looking low. We say thank you for meeting our needs. We say thank you for your word, which is what we can stand on when we can't stand on nothing else. Bless us, your people here at the Shiloh Baptist Church. Bless our pastor-elect, wherever she is right now. Endow her, dear God, with strength, with vigor, with boldness, so that when she sets place foot in this place, that she would be incited and that she would be encouraged about the work that lies ahead and that we might have a spirit that partners with this God's servant that we will glorify you in all that we do. Father God, we thank you so much right now. We had 10,000 tongues, we could not thank you enough. So we honor you right now. We plead for your mercies and your grace. Thank you, dear God, in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. And let all God's people say amen, amen, and say amen again. Now go ahead and praise God if you believe God for what we prayed for. You don't have to wait, you can celebrate them right now. Thank God, thank God, and thank God. I'm going to move out of the way as I turn the service back over in the well-capable hands of Reverend Sheila L. Thorpe as she leads us in our Lord's Supper. Say amen as the woman of God comes back to this sacred desk. Amen. Say amen again. As he was reading the names and praying for those who have been stricken in some way, by these uh, climate change events that are happening in different places. I do want to challenge us. We were not saved to be saved unto ourselves. I'm going to say that again. We were not saved to be saved unto ourselves. God chose us. He chose us and he wants us to go tell. Go tell somebody. You don't have to beat them up, but you do want to tell them that there is a Savior that they can call on any time, any day or night. It's 24-7.
And that if they will pray, and if they can't pray, you pray for them so that God will tender their hearts and allow them to be all that he intends for them to be. Say amen, church. Say amen. This is a time in our worship where we actually come. And the Lord says, as often as you come, do this in remembrance of me. For those of you who are at home and members of this congregation, we ask that you bring forth the, your set-aside bread and juice so that you might participate with us. For those of us here in sanctuary worship and for all those who are watching, now's the time for us to examine ourselves. You, you don't have to look to the left or to the right or in the front or behind. You just have to look inward. Examine ourselves and ask ourselves, are we fit to sit here today and partake of this bread, which we will change from its common use to a spiritual use, or partake of this juice, we'll change in prayer from a common use to a spiritual use. Am I fit to stand? and enjoying with Christ. If not, now's the time for you to just take a moment. Seek God's forgiveness. And he will forgive. He's promised us that. That he'll wash us afresh. Cleanse us anew. And give us all that we need to serve him. Take a moment or two. Just to meditate. Personally, insightfully. As you are meditating and as we begin, we remember that Monday, Thursday with Jesus the Christ in the upper room with the twelve. All of them were there. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples. And he told them to take, eat, this is my body. He took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink you all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And then he said, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us go in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we, your humble servants, come before you. We come and we ask, Lord God, that you wash us afresh. You cleanse us anew. That you allow us now to stand before these, your people, so that they, Lord God, might know you better, hold you dearer, that as we come together as the body of Christ, even in different parts of the state, different parts of the country, different parts of the world, that we come together as one, for we are the new creation, the fellowship of faith. We ask you, Lord God, now that as we stand before you, that you would take this bread and this wine, change them from their common use to that of a spiritual use, so that at the end, Lord God, you will be glorified. That as we partake of it, we will do what you have commanded us to do in remembrance of you. Amen, in the name of Jesus, and amen again. If you will take your bread, Just remember, this represents now God's body, the body of Jesus the Christ. That as we eat of this bread, as he blessed it on that, third, on that Monday, Thursday, that we take it. And as we do so, we do it in remembrance of him. You may eat. In the like manner, he took the cup, blessed it. 
And he says there can be no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. As we drink of this juice, as we drink of this spiritual wolf cup, we ask that you will drink it and as you drink, do so in remembrance of the work, the finished work that Jesus Christ did on Calvary for all of us. You may drink. When they had finished, they sang a song and they went out in, into the night. When we leave this place, especially after today, we leave differently than when we came. So that we came in to worship, but we always leave to serve. Let's sing this hymn. It flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yes. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never do. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day. receive the benediction now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to find us faultless before his throne in glory to the all wise and wonderful God our Father and Savior Jesus the Christ we ask now henceforth and forevermore that we be who we are in this world as we go out to serve this present age in Jesus name amen be blessed. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen.